You know, the, to tell the truth, the guys, well, they're human. They're resistant to change, and so they're resistant to using these things, at, at least at first, because, partly because, well, the guys would, would fall prey to that same sort of myth that all of us find so attractive, you know, that, that nothing really bad can ever happen to us, because all the bad stuff, it always happens to somebody else. We all like to think that, <laughs> even as we overlook the inescapable truth that to everybody else on the planet, we're one of the somebody else's, right? Um, so this thinking that bad things only happen to somebody else is not, doesn't really hold true. Um, so that was the kind of the problem that I was dealing with, but in time with, with education and persistence and a little bit of authoritarian my way or the highway sort of stuff pushed at him, um, the guys finally did see the value of using them, even though they always complained that it was a hassle, it meant extra work, it did. But we used them, we used them in different applications. When we had somebody working from, from a height from which a fall could, could, could cause injury or death, we required them to put on a safety harness. Have any of you ever wore those? Because if you put them on right, it's kind of a hassle. And on the end of that safety harness, there's metal rings, they call them D-rings, and on the end of that, one of the D-rings on the back, we would attach a short rope, it's called a lanyard, and then we would attach the other end of that rope to something secure, an anchoring point. It was a lifeline. Uh, that way, if they fell, that lifeline would prevent serious injury or even death. And I've seen it work. We were on a job where we used to drive sheet piling all the time, huge sheets of metal. Uh, we hung them in pairs so they weighed 52 pounds per running foot. A pair would, big, three feet wide, the wind would catch them like a sail, several tons, and if the wind gust came at the wrong time, it would sweep the guy right off the stand he was standing on, or off the ladder that he was standing on. And underneath him was a big steel I-beam for him to fall and be injured. Uh, but they were saved by that lifeline. Didn't like to wear it, but it worked. Another time we used them as if we were going to be putting people in what we deemed to be a hazardous confined space where there could be atmosphere problems. And usually we would send them down with supplied air or with, with you know, a, a air apparatus, self-contained breathing apparatus on their back. But when we sent them down into there, again, we put a harness on them and we attached a line to that harness. The other end this time was attached to a winch and we would let that winch free wheel as they go down in there, but if they stopped responding to us, we'd just wind the winch up and crank them out. If they lost consciousness, we could get them out of that hazardous area without putting anybody else at risk. We used lifelines because they had the ability to save lives. That's what they're for. Cool. And by now, you're sitting there wondering, oh, what is this story about as long ago passed about? Right? But you're very polite, you're not doing that, I'm not seeing any of that. Because after all, very few of us are gonna be working from great physical heights, so falls aren't generally a big risk factor for us. Some of us, our wives won't let us climb ladders anymore. Um, and few, very few of us will be working in confined spaces with toxic at atmospheres, at least I hope you don't. Um, and even though those, those notions are true enough, we still face risks, you and I, we do. On a daily basis, moment by moment, we face the risk of falling, falling into bad habits. Habits that pose risk to not only our, our physical health, but our, our, our spiritual health. We also run the risk of falling into like deep depression when we or those whom we love are hurting or suffering from illness or injury or due to concerns over finances or relationships or jobs and just a whole host of other things. And not only that, but we're also exposed to the risk of falling into this self-centered mindset that can, can lead us to think that whatever I think, whatever I feel is the most important thing and that helps to just propagate things like prejudice or hatred or intolerance of the viewpoints of others that, that are now so prevalent in this increasingly polarized society in, which, society in which we live. Our spiritual, our emotional health are at constant risk from a number of things everywhere we go, regardless of what kind of work we do. We need help, you and I. 
We need help to keep us from falling into danger and to pull us out of those, 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 those toxic atmospheres that, that pose so much risk for us. We need, we need help. We need more help than can be supplied by any human-made contraption or bought in a store or online. We need help, you and I. And fortunately for us, that help, that, that lifeline, if you will, is available. And best of all, it's free. And our scripture lessons today all point us toward that lifeline. They do. Again, it's ordinary time. They're not meant to be a theme, but there's a theme in here. In our Old Testament lesson today, God is, is speaking through the prophet. He's speaking to a people who are going through a very dark time and period in their lives. It generally thought that this was aimed at the people who were in exile. So Jeremiah is sending them a word of hope. And he talks about creating a new covenant, and that means a binding agreement between God and humankind. But that covenant isn't going to be written on, on parchment or paper or anything like that or carved into tablets of stone, but rather God tells us that I will put my instructions within them on their hearts. I'm going to put it within us. And because of this covenant, this binding agreement that God is going to put within us, God promises that he's going to be our God, that we get to be his people, that we'll no longer need to teach each other to say, know the Lord, because all of us are going to know him from the least of us to the greatest of us. And God says, I will forgive their wrongdoing and remember their sins no more. New agreement with God. But how can that be when we can't even physically see God? How, what can make the benefits of this, this life-changing, life-saving covenant available to us? It's simple. It's made available to us by faith. Faith is defined in that, that letter to the Hebrews as being the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's faith. That's what enables us to, to access those benefits of the covenant agreement. By faith, we understand that what God has promised has been realized through Jesus Christ. In, in his letter to Timothy that we read from just a few minutes ago, the apostle Paul tells us that. He says that we have received salvation through faith. That is in Christ Jesus. The sins that had separated us from, from God are forever wiped away through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, not for him, but for us. And it's, again, we didn't see that happen. But it is our faith in God that makes available to us this, this gift. And not only that, but the, the promised help from God's Holy Spirit. Because before Jesus left us, before he went to the cross, remember what he said? I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. We access that by faith. It's our faith in God that enables us to trust in his promises. It's our faith in God that enables us to comprehend the necessity of obeying his commandments. You know, that, that one job he gives us now to love other people just like we want to be loved. We trust by faith that that is good. Faith is our lifeline. But just as with those earthly lifelines that my construction pals wanted to leave hanging in the tool trailer, they don't do any good unless you put them on. That took a long time. Well, we got them. I said, go put them on. Same thing with earplugs. We got earplugs. Go put them on. The lifeline that is our faith does its best work for us when we put it on when we have just enfold ourselves with it and trust in it. Because when we turn aside from our faith, when we just simply try to rely on our own fallible and utterly finite human resources, we get into trouble, you and I. We get hurt and this world becomes just a, that much darker a place in which to live. We need to constantly access our faith every day. And we can do that. You don't need a special phone. You don't need a Wi-Fi hotspot. We can already do that. In fact, we need to do that because the easiest way to do that is through prayer. Think about that. Every prayer you make, 
whether it's a happy prayer, whether you're, you're complaining about something, whether you're praying out in anguish, every time you pray, you are saying, I believe in God. That's why I'm praying to God. You're not just there talking to yourself. You're praying to God. You're making a statement that you believe that when you pray, God is there, that he hears your prayer. And we need to keep at it so that we can keep accessing our faith. I'm not making this stuff up, folks. It says so right here. Jesus told us this again today. Remember why he told the parable about the persistent widow. Hear those words again. Jesus was telling them a parable about their need to pray continuously and not to be discouraged. Notice that Jesus didn't tell the parable about how, well, it'd be kind of nice if maybe you would think about praying every once in a while. He says, no, you need to do this. And not just once. You need to keep doing it over and over and over again. And to not be discouraged if we don't get the answer that we want right away. Because most of us have figured this out by now. We don't always get our way on this earth. We're, we're imperfect beings. We're surrounded by imperfect beings. And many of us see things differently and all of us make mistakes. People are going to do or say things that upset you. It's going to happen. People are not always going to agree with your point of view. No matter how strongly you hold that point of view, that doesn't mean that they're right and you're wrong or vice versa. It just means that people have differing opinions. But it's frustrating. Yeah, I get it. I know that. So don't give up. Don't give up. Don't let go of that lifeline that God has given to each of you through his great and gracious gift of faith. Hold on to that lifeline. Pray. Pray as often as you can and allow God's gift of faith to enable you to hold on to God through your prayers. Allow God's gift of faith to give you strength when you just can't go on on your own. Allow God's great gift of faith to allow you to see, to really realize, and to cherish within you that the best is yet to come and that the best will come. God will give it to you. You can't see that yet except through his gift of faith. Hold on to that lifeline. Hold on to your faith so that when Jesus comes, he will see you still active in your faith, still being the person that he calls you to be. Hold on to your lifeline. Spend time with God. Amen.